In this video, we are going to conquer word equations. So I am going to do two examples. In this equation, we have dinitrogen pentoxide in the presence of a platinum catalyst and high enough temperature forms nitrogen gas and oxygen gas. So I look at dinitrogen pentoxide, and the prefixes tell me this is a covalent compound. So I don't have to worry about ions and balancing charges. I just take the prefixes. So dinitrogen is N2, and then pentoxide is O5. In the presence of a platinum catalyst. Now the catalyst is not part of the reaction. But we go ahead and represent it by putting it on top of the arrow to let everyone know that was a catalyst that was used. And then we look at the word forms, and that's our arrows. It's going to form nitrogen gas. So the formula for nitrogen gas, I have to think about that. I have to ask, is nitrogen a diatomic element? And it is, and because of that, I put a 2 there. And then I'm also going to put a G there for gas. And this is where you put your plus sign. Oxygen. Oxygen is O. And I have to ask myself again, is this a diatomic element? And it is, so I put a 2 there and then a gas. Now I want to check my equation because I see there's something missing. The dinitrogen pentoxide is a gas. So I'm going to put a G there for the gas. So that is how we go from a worded equation to a chemical equation. And at this point, we want to try and balance the equation. So we're going to draw a line down the middle. And I have the element nitrogen and oxygen. Those are my two atoms on that side. I have two nitrogen and five oxygen. On the product side, I'm going to have the same two atoms. I have two nitrogen and two oxygen. So the nitrogen is balanced, but my oxygen is not. So I look at the numbers five and two. The least common multiple between those two is 10. So I need to do something so I have 10 on both sides. So in order to get 10 oxygen over here, if I put a 2 in front of the dinitrogen pentoxide, that gives me 4 nitrogen and it gives me 10 oxygen. To get 10 oxygen on the product side, I have to put a coefficient of 5 in front of my oxygen, which gives me 10 oxygen. Nitrogen is not balanced and I need 4 of them. So that's easily solved by putting the coefficient of 2 in front of nitrogen. So now I have 4. So I check my numbers, 4 and 10, 4 and 10. My coefficients are 2, 2, and 5. In this chemical reaction, solid aluminum metal is dropped into aqueous nickel 2 chloride solution. The products from this reaction are aluminum chloride and solid nickel metal. All right, so the first thing I do, I look at solid aluminum. So aluminum is Al, and it's a solid, so I'm going to put an S. And I ask myself, is aluminum a diatomic molecule? No, it is not. So I do not need the subscript of 2 there. So solid aluminum metal is dropped into aqueous nickel 2 chloride. Nickel 2 chloride is an ionic compound. I know that because nickel is a metal. So I know I'm going to have to use the charges to get my next compound. So I'm going to put a plus sign and I'm going to come over to the side and figure out what the formula is. So nickel is Ni and I know the charge on nickel is plus 2 because it tells me right there. Chloride is chlorine, and I know the charge on that is negative 1 because I can look at the periodic table and see that. And so we can crisscross 
give the one to nickel and the two to chlorine and we will have NiCl2. The products from this reaction are, so now we're talking about products, I can draw my arrow. The products from this reaction are aluminum chloride. That is an ionic compound. So I'm gonna come over here and calculate that, put this formula together. Aluminum is a plus three that I'm getting off the periodic table. And then it's going to bond with chlorine, which is a negative one. And we just crisscross these charges and you end up with AlCl3. So that's what I would write here, AlCl3. You want your chemical equation to be very neat. And so any extra work you have to do, use a scrap piece of paper or just go off to the side so it's not within your equation. And then we have solid nickel metal. So we have Ni, and I have to ask myself, is this a diatomic element? And it is not, so I don't need a subscript of two. So let's go back and make sure we have our states of matter. So solid aluminum metal is dropped into aqueous. So this is going to be Aq. The products from this reaction are aluminum chloride and solid nickel metal. So aluminum chloride, its state is going to be AQ. And the reason I know that is because aluminum is a solid and I'm putting it into a solution. And the equation told me that nickel becomes a solid. So Aluminum chloride has to be in solution. Okay, at this point, I will need to balance my equation. So I draw the line down the middle, and you list all your atoms. I have aluminum. I have one of those. I have nickel. I have one of those on the reactant side, and on the product side, I have one. Then I have chlorine. I have two chlorines on the reactant side and three chlorines on the product side. So one thing I like to do is I think of the least common multiple between two and three because my other two metals are balanced, but it's the chlorine that is not. So the least common multiple between those two is six. So if I put a three in front of nickel two chloride, that's going to give me three nickel and six chlorine. And then I come over here and I put a two here and that gives me six chlorine and two aluminum. So it did balance out my chlorine. So I have to go back and balance my aluminum and nickel. So we'll start with aluminum. I need two on the reactant side. So I put a coefficient of two there and that gives me two aluminum. And then on the product side, I need to put three here. And that gives me two, three, six, two, three, six, two, three, six. So my coefficients are a two, a three, a two, and a three. And the equation is balanced.